So to play off that last little clip, what is the view of guns, not only in this culture, but other cultures? I want to introduce you to a new friend of mine. Fortunately, he's getting out of town pretty soon. Uh, let me see if I got this right. Fabian Reinbold. Did per I get close? Perfect. All right. Now, you work for Der Spiegel in Germany. That would be the equivalent of Time or Newsweek. Exactly. Here. Yeah. Now, you've spent the last couple months here in Denver. Why? Well, I'm on this program that... Uh, sent 10 German journalists to American newsrooms all over the state, all over the states, and uh, 10 Americans to Germany. And I could basically choose where to go. And of all places, I chose Denver. Yeah. You chose the right place. This is the funnest place. I, I asked you, because a few weeks back, maybe a month ago, the Independence Institute, my organization, we do a fun tongue-in-cheek fun day called the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Party, where we smoke, drink, and shoot because we can still. And it's a wonderful uh, twerk to the nannyists that say, you know what, we can still enjoy the perks of adulthood. You came with your photographer, and I could see in your eyes you did not quite understand that. And you actually took a few shots with uh, a shotgun, shot a couple clay pigeons. And so I'm curious, when you got here and you saw Colorado and what we consider a gun culture, and you got a little taste of that, what was it when you got here? What do you think now? Okay, so Be I'm honest, honest. I'll try to be how honest. Cra how crazy do we seem <laughs> to a European? <laughs> oh, only semi-crazy. Um, so before I came here, I hadn't even touched a gun in my whole life, to be honest, um, let alone shoot one. So when I came to, to your party, it was actually the second time uh, that I would end up shooting a gun. I had uh, shot my first gun the week before. In a and who did you kill then? Um, the, how do you call these things, these paper targets? Oh, paper targets, there yeah, you go. Just the paper targets. Um, well, that was the first. And um, yeah, your party was interesting, actually. I was, uh, to be honest, I was expecting it uh, to be a bit wilder. The alcohol, firearms, tobacco title made it sound like you were... We knew you were coming, Okay, so we I toned see. it down for mm. a bit. But I mean, that's part of the, the, the thought of this, is that people think that when you enjoy the perks of adulthood and gun ownership, that those people are nuts. So what, you went there and was a little bit more tame than you, you thought. You probably didn't see the prostitution <laughs> and the gambling that we have on no, the other side. where was that? That was the other party. Okay, no. Right. So what did you think, and when you took a few shots, what do you think now? And just of the culture... Mm -hmm. in America, or at least in Colorado, and it changes state by state. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, the people I talked to who came to your party, they were very open to talk to me, um, had very interesting thoughts, so I, uh, I appreciated that. You were also nice enough to call me like a natural when I just hit like uh, a few of the clay pigeons. You shot a guy's foot off, let's be <laughs> honest, you were bad. <laughs> But um, what is the, all right, let me try it again. What is the view coming from a place like Germany where citizens are not allowed to own guns, right. where here it is a constitutional right? What is the feeling you come here? Do, you, do most Germans think we're nuts to have guns? Well, at least it's something we don't fully understand. Because as you said, we're not used to that. Um, I'm not used to having people around me carrying guns, or at least, or even people around me that might be carrying guns. So, yes, for us, it's always um, it's a strange idea or a, an idea that seems foreign to us. And it's also um, strange to us to know that you have so many gun violence deaths, basically, every week, every month. So that was something uh, I was very interested in talking to uh, your folks uh, at the party or in other instances. What did you learn from the folks? I mean, uh, about, let's say, the, the gun deaths. I think I told you mm -hmm. that something like 60% of those are suicides. And uh, in your country, when people want to commit suicide, they, they just read Karl Marx. <laughs> and we don't uh, commit so many suicides as you do them. here. Right. I don't know right. why that is. But um, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, s there was a very common reaction I had. Like, like you mentioned, the suicides, that's something I hear very often. And then also, I was talking to one politician who was at your, at your party. He was very interesting to talk to. And when I asked him about the gun deaths here, he was like, yeah, you know, we have three, 300 million guns around in the States. But who actually got shot today? Or who got shot yesterday? Somebody did. Somebody did. But he was making it sound like it was all in Chicago. And nowhere else. So I found that a bit uh, surprising to me because when you, when you tune into the news, you see all these all right. sorts of shootings 
all over the country. When you break it out, you do find that there are more pockets of violence that stand out more than others. And usually those pockets are inner cities where they have tight gun control, like mm -hmm. Washington and Chicago. You know, places like Texas where everybody's got a, got a gun like you're wearing a pair of glasses. It doesn't happen as often. It still, it still happens. Just uh, remember Houston this week, right? Exactly. Yeah. It, it, does, it does happen. What else about the culture, though? I mean, behind that, uh, what did you hear from people about the reason that they mm -hmm. value the Second Amendment and didn't make any sense to you? Well, what I heard a lot, and actually it does make sense to me, is, to under, is when I understood that um, basically what's, what's beneath all this is your view of government or your, your attitude towards government. A lot of people explained that to me, and I think that was very enlightening to hear. What did they explain? What did you hear, and, and do you believe it? <laughs> well, they said, like, we have this distrust of government, and our Second Amendment is the best defense against any kind of tyranny. Whereas you in Europe, they would say, you are used to monarchy, uh, dictatorship, and whatever. You have, a very different, you have a very different history and a very different attitude towards government. And I think it's true. We don't view the government or the state as negative as you do here. And uh, that's a point that everybody always made to me, and uh, that's something I actually did learn here, yeah. We've got friends in, in England who said, we don't understand your, your love of guns. And I said, well, that's because we kicked you out of here because citizens had guns. Uh, and, you know, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for our ability to kick you guys out of, out of this country, we might be speaking English today instead of American. So that was a benefit. Uh, does, does that ring at all true to you? I mean, I, I look at the history over the last century in Europe, mm -hmm. and you see you know, the wars that have ravaged the continent. We haven't seen that. We saw the Civil War, of course, but that was, that was a different thing. We haven't seen that here. Mind you, we don't have uh, country bordering country. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of nice, nice oceans to keep that, right. keep that clear. But did, did that argument persuade you at all, or does it just seem silly? No, it doesn't, it doesn't just seem silly, but it was, um, when, when I talked to the people, I would often ask, so what has the government uh, ever done to you? Like, well, has it ever done anything bad to you? And the most people would say it was that, like, well, they were, they were threatened with a fine because they didn't pay their property taxes. Whereas I, as a European, would say, yeah, of course, you have to pay your, uh, you have to pay your property taxes. That's not something so terrible. Yeah. Do, do you get a feeling, though, that it, it is um, oh, an intergenerational thing, that it's not about saving your rights now from your property mm -hmm. taxes, but it's generations from now, their ability to be able to stop something should it happen. That very fact that since there are armed people, the government's never going to get too abusive. You're not going to have real tyrants. You might have bureaucrats. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I'm not so sure about this because, I mean, if, if we talk dystopia, if we talk tyranny, does it, is your AR-15 going to protect you from some evil police force that wants to invade your house? I'm not so sure about that. That's possible. It's a fair point. All right. Let's get down to the real business, though. Germany claims to have good beer. Now that you've been in the Napa Valley of beer, <laughs> tell me honestly, who has better beer? Colorado or Germany? I've learned a lot about beer here. And I really come to admire um, all your different crafts, all the creativity, all the finesse that goes into your craft. Brewing. Why do I feel that something bad? But, bad's but. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a column for, for the Denver Post about that. They made me try out all the, the different uh, craft breweries. And I really had a, had a great time on this very important research. and. Um, I met a lot of interesting people, had a lot of good beer. You know, these. But it's th not like home? At some point, I started missing. I started you, to you miss the pills, good. You mean a clean Pilsner? A clean, a was good, this stuff uncomplicated just, beer. So everything else here is too flavorful, too fruity, too diverse? It's great to taste. I had a jalapeno, a blonde <laughs> ale, I had the <laughs> caramel stout, right. and whatever. All right, well, we'll keep working on you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Talk to you next week. Thanks, John.